and thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark TV. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about being our best selves. I am very excited to bring my guest today, Lynn Wilson. And we're going to talk about his book, Dear Mr. Flynn. So go on, get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea because we're about to get started. Hello, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Spark TV. Kiora, I'm from New Zealand, at Kiora, and thank you, Angela, for having me on your show and allowing me to talk about my book, Dear Mr. Flynn. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, as is tradition here on the show, we always give our guests an opportunity to do a quick little introduction of themselves to perhaps the few people that may be unfamiliar with you or with your work. So first question is, what makes you, you? What makes you, uh, uh, what makes you win? Right, well, I've had quite a varied career. I've been a uh, history teacher at secondary schools. Um, I have spent uh, about 40 years traveling the world. Um, I have written travel articles, um, school textbooks, and now I'm writing books for adults. So my first book is Dear Mr. Lynn, and it's published, and it's doing quite well, I think. It's been out for eight months now. And um, I, I, uh, so it's based on, it's autobiographical. It's based on 40 short stories from my travels. Um, for years, my friends and family have laughed at my funny stories. And they laugh and they say, you should write a book. So I wrote the book and I didn't find it. Very Absolutely. Difficult. Now, leading up to that, being an author, is that something that you have always wanted to do? Or did you find that life simply presented the opportunity? Um, I've, I've been writing all my life. I've written three school textbooks uh, and um, I've been writing travel articles for magazines and newspapers. So writing is something I've been doing for 40 years. Uh, in 1977, I did my first trip overseas when I went to China. And when I came back, I wrote a full page feature for the uh, newspaper about education in China. And it was well received. And so I thought, oh, that was easy. So I've been writing ever since. Absolutely. I can understand that. I love it. I love it. Now, the title of this book, Dear Mr. Lin, why did you choose those words to entitle this book? All right. Well, it's a book I, this, I wrote this book to cheer up the world um, because I like making people laugh and I like seeing people happy. So my book is full of good humor and it's also packed with information. And there's 37 countries covered in this book. I called it Dear Mr. Lin because when I was in Thailand, um, I, was, I, I met some people there and they kept calling me Dear Mr. Lin. Every time they addressed me, they called me Dear Mr. Lin. And so I thought that kind of caught on. So I thought that's going to be the title of my book. Dear Mr. Lin. So in my 40 short stories, in each story, I try to have a reference to Dear Mr. Lin. Dear Mr. Lin gets robbed. Dear Mr. Lin gets lost. Dear Mr. Lin gets swindled. Dear Mr. Lin misses the train. Dear Mr. Lin is constantly getting into strife because I'm a free independent traveler. So that means when I travel, I go independently as long as it's possible. And then when you travel that way, things happen to you. You get adventures. Mm -hmm. I wrote now, as far as traveling is concerned, why everyone has their thing, their niche or their niche, depending on where you are in the world, how you choose to pronounce it in your country. And with that being said, why is traveling so important to you? I think traveling is the greatest um, educational opportunity that's available to people because it's a learning experience from beginning through to end. And uh, I, I, when I go traveling, I, I get off the tourist trail and I go wandering. I like the back streets and I, I, like, to, I like to go to galleries and museums and, and get into forests and jungles and beaches and mountains. Um, so I like to get off the tourist trail and uh, see something different. I, I never go to a resort and sit, sit down on the beach. I just can't do it. Um, I, so if I, so I, I'm, I'm just constantly on the move when I'm traveling and I go out each day looking for something to happen and stuff happens to you when you're traveling on your own or sometimes I travel with my partner um, and uh, sometimes I've traveled in a group when there's been no other way for example when I went to North Korea I had to travel in a group no other way to do it 
but yeah. Right, right. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. Now, as far as your book is concerned, is there a particular demographic that would really enjoy your book a little bit more than another? Like, do you need to be a seasoned traveler yourself in order to enjoy it? Or would even someone as young as perhaps a high schooler uh, be able to enjoy the book as well? Oh, yes, high schoolers that enjoy the book. It's full of fun. Um, some of the themes are adult themes. Some of the concepts are maybe a little bit difficult for younger people. But I, I would say young adult through to adults. So I, I've sold a few copies to school libraries. And I've, I've, um, I've got a 12-year-old uh, niece and a 10-year-old niece. And she's been reading the book and she seems to understand it. So it's, it's good humour and good fun. And I, I think young adults onwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to have those uh, guidelines sometimes just to be able to know what the what the boundaries and borders are as far as what we're what we're taking in, even if we're reading it, just to make sure that we're not uh, offending anyone in any way. I love how you say, you know, some of the stories are adults are going to get it. And it's just e an easy read for an adult as opposed to a child. I can I can definitely understand that. As far as your favorite destinations are concerned, I know that many times with people who travel, they prefer a particular environment. Some people are beach babies like I am, or others would prefer going to the mountains, let's say. Do you have a favorite destination? And if so, why? What, what type of terrain makes it your favorite? Oh, I've got several favorites. Um, Ecuador and Bolivia were my favorites because I, I went there and spent a few months in those two countries. And I love the mountains and the train journeys and the people and the costumes. So Ecuador and Peru stood out. Uh, Bhutan is another favorite because when I was there, I felt like I'd left the planet. There was absolutely nothing there that spoke of the modern world. They're just completely outside. They got their own type of architecture, religion, uh, language, king. Lost in the Himalayas. I felt like I'd left planet Earth so different. Uh, other favorites are Turkey. I have a lot of friends in Turkey. I've spent a lot of time exploring Turkey and I love Turkish food. It's my favorite. Greece is another favorite. Italy and Spain. I've got lots of favorites. It's hard to just designate one. I, there isn't, I've been to 90 countries and there isn't one that I didn't like. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, that just says a lot about this beautiful world that God has created. I love it. I love it. So Lynn, it is time for us to go to break. But before we do, can you please remind everyone, please, what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? Okay. My, the, the title of my book is Dear Miss Lynn. Uh, you can contact me on my email, that's easy, lwilson62 at outlook.co.nz. Um, and I've also got a Facebook page in my name. All righty, everyone. And now you know where you can get a copy of the book. It's available on Amazon and where books are sold. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> We're home during COVID-19, but we're not alone. New Life Pastoral Counseling can help. For affordable Christian counseling, visit newlifepastoralcounseling.com or call 562-209-2083 today. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items, or if you wanna take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touched surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches and wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Hi, do you have something to share? Be a guest. Want to sponsor an episode? Visit drangelachester.com. 
Thanks again for watching Daily Spark TV. Know how to wear your face mask correctly. First, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Put your face mask over your nose and mouth and secure it under your chin. If the mask has loops, hook them around your ears. If it has ties, secure them at the base of your neck and crown of your head. Make sure you can breathe easily. Remove your mask carefully. Untie the straps or unhook the loops from your ears and pull the mask away from your face without touching the front of your mask. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth when taking off your mask. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds immediately after removing your mask or use hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Learn more at cdc.gov slash coronavirus and coronavirus.gov. I wear a mask. I wear a mask. I wear a mask. I wear a mask. Because. I wear a mask because it's a tiny sacrifice to protect your freedoms. I wear a mask because I can help stop the spread of COVID-19 in my community. I wear a mask because I care about you, even if I don't know you. I want to keep doctors, nurses, and other essential workers safe. I wear a mask because I can, but my baby can't. I wear a mask because I want to feel safe sending my kids back to school. My kids wear masks to keep their friends safe. I wear a mask because I want you to stay healthy. I wear a mask because I really want to get a haircut soon. I wear a mask because I care about the health and well-being of those around me. I wear a mask because I might not know that I'm sick. Yo uso una máscara para mi familia y la comunidad. I wear a mask because I want to keep others safe. I wear a mask because I want to protect everybody. I wear a mask because too many people who look like me are getting sick and dying from COVID-19. I've grown fond of seeing people smile with their eyes. It's a beautiful experience in these times. Do it for their futures. Even if you don't have to, I hope you choose to. Hi, do you have something to share? Be a guest. Want to sponsor an episode? Visit drangelachester.com. Thanks again for watching Daily Spark TV. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark TV. I am your host, Dr. Angela Chester. My guest today is Lynn Wilson, and we are talking about the book, Dear Mr. Lynn. Now, my next question for you, Lynn, is your suggestion for couples who are traveling. We always get those questions in the various travel forums. What you know, what is the best thing for couples to do when they go to a destination location? Now, of course, it would be easy if you knew where the destination was, you could give very specific uh, um, instructions there. But in general, is there a particular way that you think that couples should travel? Oh, I think that first of all, you have to do some research. Don't just turn up somewhere. So read about the destination, read about its geography, its history, its politics, Get an understanding of its attractions and its activities before you go there. Then you've got a, a background and you've already, you arrive and on, 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 feet are on the ground and you've already got a head full of this country. Um, another thing would be if, if, uh, if you're not familiar with traveling, then I would recommend you go in a group. Um, that, uh, uh, that's if you're not familiar with traveling and not confident about it, go in a group. I actually work for an American company called Road Scholar and uh, I host. Uh, groups of Americans around uh, New Zealand and Australia. Uh, and that's, it's educational tours for older people. So most of the people are age 65 and over, 
and I meet them at Auckland Airport and then I guide them around and it's we get behind the scenes and we see things that a normal tourist doesn't get to see. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, when it comes to traveling as an individual, of course, depending on where you're traveling, and it's always safer to travel in numbers, but there are those independent people out there who choose to simply do their own thing. Do you have any suggestions for those who wish to travel alone or simply as an individual? Um, I think yeah, I, I think it's it's difficult. Um, it depends how much previous experience one has had uh, traveling. For me, it, it's quite easy. I, I actually prefer traveling with a partner. Um, so I, I travel with my wife because um, she, she's very good at traveling. So she always enjoys it. But often I just go away on my own and uh, just land somewhere. Um, I've done some background reading and I, I start to wander and I behind the scenes meet people. Uh, it's very useful if you know some local people. Uh, that that's that's very helpful. Um, yeah, so I think uh, do your research, uh, choose your destinations carefully, um, and uh, and take good care of security. Don't, don't ever let your guard down. One of the stories in my book was a couple of times when I've been traveling, I've let my guard down, and I've I've been robbed, um, and uh, it's because I wasn't paying attention. Now, speaking of those sticky situations, that's the next question that I have for you. How should people deal with um, being in a sticky situation, be it that you inadvertently have broken a law in another country or you simply were out past you know, curfew or, or something like that? What do you do when it's a sticky situation? Oh, don't panic. Don't panic, it'll be fine. I've been in some very sticky situations and I've thought, oh God, how am I going to get out of this one? Um, but it always works out. Have, have people back in your home country know where you are. Uh, that's quite useful. Uh, carry um, someone else's ID with you, some, a contact person in case of an emergency. That's worked for me. Uh, I've ended up in a hospital in Oman and uh, I, I had the contact details of a friend. Um, so I got rescued by that. They phoned me. So I have someone's have someone's contact information with you. Let people back home know where you are and when you're going to be and wherever. Uh, and and uh, don't let your guard down, but not to the point of being paranoid. I I leave my um, valuables at the hotel. Uh, most hotels have a safe deposit box, and I don't go out on the streets carrying my passport or very much money. I I go up because if something if something goes wrong, we've lost it all. So um, leave things at the security at the hotel. Tell people where you're going to be and when you're going to be there. I have got someone's contact details on you. You know, that's great information for even when you are stateside. I think that people need to remember that um, to, to simply be careful no matter where you are, even if you're in your own home, in, in your own home city. Uh, when something happens on, on the news uh, here stateside, people will say, I never thought that would happen in a, in a little place like this. Well, that can happen anywhere and everywhere. So you're giving great advice there. You are so right. Good, good, good tip. I love it. I love it. Now, in, in all of the travels that, that you have been able to do, and I love that you have been able to really and truly uh, grace this beautiful globe of ours, um, has traveling taught you um, any particular lesson, uh, be it that it's about freedoms, about understanding our interconnectedness with our fellow global citizen? What, what lessons do you think that you have learned along the way? Connectivity with fellow humans. Um, I, I've got friends all over the world, and I'm proud of it. Uh, I can't. I, I, um, I keep in contact with people in many countries. Uh, I got good friends in most places I've been. Um, you've just got to realise that we're all human. We're all sharing this planet, and it upsets me when uh, there's war and there's revolutions and all this strife going on. It really upsets me because I, I consider myself. A, I'd be a conscientious objector. I think that. If I was sent off to a battlefield, um, someone would shoot me. I, I wouldn't be able to pull the trigger and shoot a total stranger. Uh, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I think we're an international community and we should celebrate life and be happy and have fun and meet the locals. When you meet the locals, this is when things start to happen.
Um, I met the locals in Bolivia and they were they bought a fridge and they were going to sell Coca-Cola. <clears throat> and they um I, I was walking along and they invited me over. So I came over and they were drinking a drink called Chicha and they were tipping it onto the fridge and it was running all down into the wiring. And I thought I better get out of here before it blows up and they'll blame me for it. But I, I but that's so nice. That's just an example of how I, I like to interact with people. So when I'm walking around, I I, I learn how to greet people in their own language and I greet people and they stop and they 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 reach you back. Even it happened in North Korea. I mean North Korea was a very controlled trip. Um, with Mr. Kim at the back and Mr. Kim at the front. But still, um, and the locals were kept away from us. But one local man broke through the barriers and he just came up to me and he said, we want peace. And I thought, well, that's something. Um, you know, that you can reach out, you've got to reach out to the locals and get to know them and uh, interact with them. And I get taken home now again. And I, I, ended up in, I end up in someone's home and I think, oh, how'd I get here? Um, but it, that's how you've got to do it. You've got to if we're all international citizens. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think that when we when we change how we look at each other and understand that we are all uh, the, the same uh, underneath it all, then it really does change the, the dynamic of how we interact with each other. Now, as far as being an author is concerned, I know that so many um, of, of the people that I hear from, they appreciate when I ask the questions um, from the author perspective for our aspiring authors out there. So I'd like to kind of shift gears just a little bit. When it was time for you to determine how you would process your book, how you would publish the book, and there's self-publishing and then there's using a publishing house, how did you determine which way you would publish your book? All right. Well, with the school books I've written, I've self-published two of them, published a third for a company. But with this book, Dear Mr. Lean, I went online and I found a self-publishing company. And I just took my chances with it. Uh, and I, um, they, they did a very professional job on the book. Uh, I'm still waiting to get rich from the world because they haven't started the flow yet. Mm -hmm. so. Now, as far as uh, advice that you would give to aspiring authors out there, as far as stepping out in, you know, stepping out in that dream and, and making it making it happen. Is there any bit of advice that you wish that you would have had before you got started that would have made the process easier? Um, yeah, I found the process quite easy. Actually. Um, the, the book was already in my head and I just had to put, put it down on, on, on paper. I mean, it was just ready to go. Um, so I, I think choose your publisher carefully because uh, there's a great variety and there's a lot of scammers out there too. You have to be very, very careful. Um, so um, think things through, don't rush, but just be confident in your own work and your own ability and uh, let the creativity flow and don't hold back. Um, I, I felt very confident writing Dear Mr. Lynn. It just poured out of my head and I had it done in about four weeks. And then I went on and did, I'm writing more books. It's just like time stop now. People say, where are you getting all this stuff from? I said, well, it's all banked up in my head waiting to go. And I've been telling you stories all these years. I should have been charging you for the stories. But just be confident and do your research carefully. Uh, and watch out for the scammers, because I got caught out a couple of times. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great piece of advice there. Now, a last question for you, since we are on a Christian network and we talk about faith here on the program, I have to ask you, how do you believe that your faith has allowed you to be the person that you are today? Not do you go to church every Saturday or Sunday or do you pray every night or anything like that? Not that part of your faith, but just the, the ability to know that God is with you at all times. How do you think that, that your faith has played a part in your day-to-day -day life and all that you've done? Oh, well, I, 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 um, I've traveled to many countries and I've seen many different religions. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Buddhist countries. Uh, I've spent time in Muslim countries, Christian countries, and even in atheistic countries. Um, yeah, and so I personally don't um, have a religious belief. I'm open-minded, uh, and I, I I think we're um, I think I think a lot of people have got uh, religion wrong. I'm not talking about faith. I'm talking about established churches, and I think a lot of people have got the 
wrong idea and it's caused a lot of grief in the world um, for the poor here, et cetera. So I, I just go around with an open mind and, and being myself. All righty. Well, Lynn, thank you so much for being a guest here on Daily Spark TV today. And before I let you go, one last time, please, if you would, could you remind everyone what is the title of your book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? Okay, now I hope they're all going to rush out and buy it. It's called Dear Mr. Lynn. It's an easy read. It's full of fun and information. Uh, you can buy it on uh, Amazon, uh, my website, um, I'm on, I have a Facebook page and my email address is lwilson62 at outlook.co.es. Um, Thank you again, Lynn, for being on the show. We appreciate your being here. And viewers, thank you for spending time with us here as well. I hope that we have enlightened, inspired, and empowered you to be your best today. As always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. You are looking at my book. I'm holding it here. It's called Dear Mr. Lynn by Lynn Wilson. And uh, it's available on Amazon uh, or, and a lot of bookshops throughout the United States too. So go looking for it. This is what it looks like. My uh, email address is lwilson62 at outlook.co.nz. I'm looking for a full inbox later in the day. And hello to all my friends out there in America. Have the past few weeks or months been challenging? Yes for all of us. We've been thrown into circumstances which we could never have imagined. Loss of jobs, working from home, general uncertainty, all while dealing with COVID. It's causing us to be a little on edge. If you need someone to talk to, Dr. Angela Chester can help. Visit newlifepastoralcounseling.com to get started. We're in this together. A natural disaster may force you to evacuate, and the coronavirus could impact your emergency plans. So take steps now to help your family and community prepare. Keep a supply kit stocked with cloth face coverings, disinfecting supplies, and hand sanitizers. Check with local officials about what shelter spaces will be open during quarantine efforts. And remember to review the CDC's guidelines with the whole family. Disasters won't wait. Neither should you. Visit ready.gov plan to make a plan today. Thank you.